Hi and welcome. You've made it to uh, the first part of the lesson where we're going to introduce how to join tables together, which is really the essence of SQL in relational databases, is the ability to take multiple tables and join them together to produce a resultant record set. And how I want to introduce the subject to you is by first covering the general syntax for creating joins and as we do it to look at it from the perspective of the data to, so you can get it kind of an understanding of how things join together. This is a subject where we could go down a lot of different rabbit holes and trails. I'm going to try to keep us focused so we're just on the mission at hand and that is how do I mechanically join two tables to one another? What I found in teaching this subject is that um, by being able to look at the data itself in learning how to join tables together is, is, is a very powerful and reinforcing technique. And so what I've done is I've created two mocked up tables up here, one called person, and the person table consists of two columns, last name, person underscore PK, and person underscore PK just so happens to be the primary key of that table. My second table is called phone, and it consists of three columns, the phone number, the phone type, and the person FK, underscore FK the primary key of this table are the two columns person FK and phone type. Now I want to take a step back and I want to talk for a minute about the notion of a primary key within a table. I want to talk about that again. As you know from previous lessons the purpose of having a primary key on a table is to guarantee the uniqueness of the row. And so in the person table, the primary key is this number in the column person PK that's going to guarantee, there's only going to be one number that's unique that guarantees the uniqueness of a given row. Same thing in the phone table. The primary key consists of two columns. This column called person underscore FK and the phone type that's going to guarantee the uniqueness of the row. Now I want to have a quick talk about entity relationships or table relationships. As we build data relational databases, which is not the purpose of this course, our goal in, in creating a relational database in relation, and creating tables is to express a relationship between tables or what I've also referring to as entities. And so in the context of this, if we step back and look at it from a logical perspective, a person can have many phone numbers. They can have a cell phone, they can have a work phone, they can have a home phone number, they might have two cell phones because they're just into cell phones, you know, what have you. So the logical relationship between these two entities is that a person can have many phone numbers. I now need to be able to establish a relationship between the two entities and how I do that is based on a foreign key that I can tie back to a primary key or typically a primary key. The thing that you need to understand is as I join two entities together I'm going to have a left side and a right side. I'm always, always going to be joining the right side back to a unique element in the left table. Always. And that's typically going to be the primary key. But there can be scenarios where I'm joining it back to an index where no duplicates are allowed. A lot of times in a table what will be created is what's referred to as a surrogate key and a surrogate key is typically a GUID or some unique number. And I don't want to get too much into the rabbit 
trail discussion on that. So the goal is, is to be able to join two entities to one another. There are two types of joins, two predominant types of joins that if you learn these two, you're going to be able to relate 99.99% of the entities tables to one another if you understand the mechanics of this. There's what's called a joint and a left joint. And I will sometimes refer to the join as a straight join to differentiate the two. That's not an industry standard buzzword. It's just one I like to use. Well, let's have a look at the syntax. If, we, if you examine this select statement, you have already been exposed and have coded every facet of it with the exception between the from and the where is where we join our entities together if we need to join two tables. And the syntax for that is join the table I want to join on the columns that I want to join to each other. And without getting into how, how do you know what the columns were to join, we're going to cover that a bit later. What I want to cover with you now is how I go about joining the two tables together mechanically. Well, I want to join the phone table back to the person table, so join phone on where phone dot person underscore FK is equal to person whoops <laughs> underscore PK. So that's going to join these two together. I also, if you notice, have the row restriction where PK is greater than or equal to 4. Now if I had taken off this join statement and removed the columns that are associated with this table, as you know, or should know by this point, I would return the following rows. But on a join, since I'm joining, let's take a look at the resultant data set and match it to our table. So as the query, what's called the query executor process, goes and runs our query, what it's doing is it's joining this table to this table on this column equal to this column. And so it's starting where, based on the row restriction, where the person PK is greater than or equal to 4. And since there's a join on the two tables, it's, it's finding, oh, OK, I have a match. 4 is equal to 4. And so it's returning our three columns up here. Last name, phone, and number. It's also joining and returning this, the cell phone for VLander, back. Now when it goes to join 5, so greater than or equal to 4, to here, there is no entity. There is no row where I have a foreign key, a person FK, a number equal to 5. And so I'm not getting anything back. There's nothing to get back. It's truly a, the row is non-existent in here. It's a null row. It doesn't exist. When I go to Darcy, number 6, same scenario. I get nothing in the resultant record set. Melrose. Ah, I have a hit over here in this table. So I am returning that row back. 8. I don't have a hit. So I'm only going to get back with a join where the left table has a row that matches or rows, as in this case, that matches on the left side table. Now suppose I wanted to get back, well I want to see everything in the left table irrespective of if there a row exists in the right hand table. If you examine the join statement and the left join statement, you will see they are identical with the exception of the word, the keyword left placed before the join. And what that tells the query executor is, yo, I want you to return, whoop, I did it again, click on the little button. I want you to return every row in the left hand table even if there isn't a corresponding row in the right table. And so as you look at the record set that gets returned, I am returning Jones now 
5, I'm returning 6, and I'm returning 8, but since there's no phone type or number, because that row doesn't exist, these are just empty. Okay, so now you've been exposed to the basic join syntax on how to join two entities together. And we're going to stop this lesson. And our, in our next lesson, we're going to go into the workbench and work together and create a simple join. So I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.